All right, how is it going everyone? Welcome back to another YouTube video here on the channel. I've got Matt with me here today, and today we're gonna to be doing something to the go-kart that I've been thinking about doing for a long time. And so this is already the first go-kart of its kind. No one else has a go-kart like this as far as I know because I designed this thing completely myself. But today, basically, we're gonna be adding something to the go-kart that's gonna make this thing the first go-kart in the world to have this, so stay tuned. All right, so what is one thing that a lot of high-performance car manufacturers are implementing into a lot of their cars today? Now, I'll give you a second to think about it. Now, if you guessed Active Aero, you were right. So, Active Aero has been a huge aspect to car design and engineering. Um, it started in the 90s, really, or maybe even before that with the McLaren F1. But today, it's, you know, in current, car design and in the past 10 years, Active Aero has seen a huge increase in, in implementation on cars. It really started with the Bugatti Veyron. Now the Bugatti Veyron's wing is, it comes up at a certain speed and when you hit the brakes, it'll actually fold up and act as an air brake to stop the car even faster than the mechanical brakes can do. Um, and I think it's some crazy number, like the air brake on a Bugatti has the same braking power as like the normal brakes on a Volkswagen Jetta or Golf, which is crazy. Um, so, and the idea of Active Aero really came from airplanes from what I know. Is basically, so if you think about when you're in a big passenger jet and you're about to land, the minute the wheels touch the ground on the runway, all these spoilers on the wing pop up and those act as air brakes to help slow the plane down since the mechanical brakes can only do so much. And then there's also the reverse thrusters, but I don't plan on putting reverse thrusters on this thing. So basically, Active Aero came from airplanes, from what I know, and it's been huge in the car industry now. McLaren uses it, Lamborghini uses it, Bugatti uses it, Koenigsegg, Pagani. Pagani goes even a lot farther because they have four separate wings that act and fly up or fold up at different rates to help control the body roll of the car. So that's crazy. So basically, in sum, this go-kart is gonna be the first ever go-kart to have a wing not just a wing, but a wing that uses active aero. Now, how much it'll be functional, I don't know, maybe a little bit, but for aesthetic purposes, I think it'll be pretty cool. So we're gonna we're working on designing it right now, and then the next video, I'm gonna split this up into a few videos so it doesn't get too long. The next video will be us fabricating it, and then painting it, and actually doing the wing, and then the cabling system. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly how we're designing this. All right, so basically how I'm going to uh, approaching this wing design is I don't want to drill any new holes in the go-kart frame. I just want to avoid that hassle. So I'm using the existing uh, bolt holes for the two inner bearings on the axle here. So there's a bearing, two sets of bearings. There's two, there are two sets of uh, bolts. Two bolts here and then two bolts on the other bearing, um, underneath the other bearing. So basically what I'm going to do is utilize those bolts and have an under-mounted wing. Um, so it's going to have some sort of flat stock piece that mounts to it underneath and then it's going to come out and then come out at a 45 and then go up and then attach to the wing. And I kind of got this inspiration from the uh, Rocket Bunny like BRZ FRS wings that kind of mount uh, at, at the lower part of the trunk instead of the top part of the trunk. So it's kind of like an under mounted wing almost. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm going for. We kind of just have a rough uh, Sharpie diagram right now. So this will be the flat stock piece that comes underneath and then we'll have the 45 piece and then the vertical piece and then we're not going to do this extra 45 and then the wing will just mount right to here. So how are we going to be doing the active aero part? That's the next question. Alright, so how exactly am, gonna, am I going to make this wing an active wing versus just a static wing? Um, so a lot of cars like the McLarens, Bugattis, they use hydraulic actuators or electronic actuators to actually move the wing um, and pivot it when you hit the brakes or whatnot. Uh, so obviously I'm not going to do the hydraulic actuators or electrical because that gets pretty complicated. So I'm going to strictly go with a rudimentary idea of using a cable system, uh, kind of like the old airplanes did actually to control their ailerons and flaps and stuff like that. So basically, how the wing is gonna work, it's gonna have a little lever on top of the wing here, and then when you hit the brake, uh, there's gonna be a cable attached to the top of the wing. 
and the cable is going to run down, hit a pulley, and then do a 90 degree turn and attach to the brake master cylinder down here. So basically every time you hit the brakes and this lever goes forward, it's going to pull that cable and then the cable will pull the wing down and you'll get an active, active wing. So that's kind of how I'm going to be making this thing active and I think it'll just kind of add some cool pizzazz and flair uh, to the go-kart. As I said, whether or not it's like really functional and adding more braking force is a question. Like you'd have to do some calculations and stuff like that, which is kind of beyond what I'm wanting to do for this. Um, so this is more just for like aesthetic and I think it'd be cool to add uh, an extra back section of the go-kart to kind of make it look even more complete than it already is now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go in now and we're gonna throw up, so that was like the rough design here and we're gonna do kind of a more finalized design and try and take some more exact measurements to know exactly how much material we have to buy because I've gotta to go to the uh, hardware store to get all of the uh, stock metal um, to be able to build this thing. A little bit extra support. So, this way. I bring you back to the that was like that marky. Just more support, the closer you get to that. And then that's almost new. Alright, so let's just make it to the edge of the rest of the 45s. Wait, wait, wait. I think that's a good length to come up at 45 and go straight up. Yeah. Actually, we should probably make this a little bit longer than 15 because I want to be able to have a gusset. So you can mount this 45, right? You want to have a vertical piece of support. Yeah, high. So how tall do you think you make it that for 45? I don't know. If this is 90, right? So you split it half and half and half, so that's better. Okay, so what do we think in terms of height? How, you want it like just at the base of, when we have it at 45, it comes like just at the base of this piece. So again guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure you stay tuned for the videos to come here on the channel. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. So thanks again guys, I'll see you in the next one.